Good morning. Pastor Ed here from Hope Lutheran Church in Freehold, New Jersey with daily devotions for Saturday, December the 26th, 2020, the day after Christmas. Before we begin, I just want to say that I'm going to take next week off from these daily devotions to, to unwind and relax, have a little downtime. And hopefully you'll have the opportunity to, to do a little bit of that yourself. But don't worry, these online daily devotions will be will resume then again on Monday, January the 4th. And I'm look, looking forward to, to once again spending this time with you each day. Well, today's reading comes from Psalm 89. And it reminds us of God's faithfulness and steadfast love, especially as it was directed towards King David, the great hero of the Old Testament including the promise that God would establish David's throne and descendants forever. However, before we continue with today's reading, let's begin first, as we always do, with the service of responsive prayer, namely the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, and Martin Luther's morning prayer. Let us begin. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, our reading this morning is, again, from Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4, and then 19 through 26. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. And then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said, I have set the crown on one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, You are my God, my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Although we have no way of knowing it for sure, it's believed that, um, by some at least, tradition has it that David wrote the Psalms, all 150 of them. That seems a little hard to believe, but did he have a hand in writing some of them? Very well might have. And this is written in a, in a way that may, makes you think that you know, it's, it's, it's David speaking, that speaking of God's steadfast love, the, um, God's faithfulness, and, but then remembering the, the promise that his descendants would be established forever, his throne for all generations. And again, this commitment that God 
made to David. Um, but David's an interesting guy. I did a sermon series on him a few years ago in which the, the theme of the series of sermons on David was flawed hero because that's what he was. His greatness is, is undenied, uh, but he was flawed. Um, someone once said, we can be thankful, though, that Scripture deals openly with failure. The defects of the saints are not edited out. The dark sides of people who made a difference in their generations are there for all to see, including King David's adultery and murderous scheming. There was a, a, a Lutheran uh, scholar and seminary, not seminary professor, I think he taught at the University of Iowa, actually, George Farrell, um, who wrote a book on the Lutheran Confessions some years ago, and I remember uh, him pointing out that in the Lutheran Confessions, Lutherans, we have a, we have a different concept of sainthood, obviously, than Roman Catholics do. And the interesting thing to Pharrell was that the only saint that's mentioned in the Lutheran Confessions is David. And again, a terribly flawed hero. Somebody for whom, uh, uh, who, who did a, 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 number of, a number of things. Um, again, most, most notably, um, the affair with Bathsheba, having her husband Uriah killed in battle. Uh, he had multiple failures beyond that as well did a lot of of great things and good things but again he was as luther came to understand all of us saint and sinner at the same time and so the fact that that god would would be so faithful to him and, and have steadfast love for david even though david was always letting him down or continually letting him down is is something to be said not about david obviously but about god uh, about God's desire um, to be with us, to guide us, to lead us, even though in many ways we don't deserve it, and even though in many ways we do things to, uh, to reject God, and yet God doesn't reject us in turn. I read an interesting story um, entitled Pressure Washing. The fellow writes, a wooden fence around our yard was black from mildew in parts, but it was mostly sun-bleached gray. The grime was heaviest around the sprinkler heads where Florida humidity turns the, the porous wood into a mildew factory. I'd grown accustomed to the funk and had gotten so used to its presence that it didn't bother me anymore. In fact, my fence looked just like everybody else's in the neighborhood. They're all about the same age, have had the same exposure, with the exception of a few newer homes that have been built. My privacy fence was awful. I was okay with it. Enter my next door neighbor. Ed decides to do something radical. He didn't ask me or anything. He just decided that he wanted to pressure wash his fence. As one of the few folks who moved north to be here, he came from South Florida uh, about a year ago and seems to have fresh eyes for our neighborhood in town. He hated the grimy fence and decided to do something about it. Over a three-day period, he pressure washed all that grime off the wooden planks that separate us as neighbors. The boards looked brand spanking new on his side. My side looked even worse in comparison. I was convicted. It wasn't so much as keeping up with the Joneses thing. Their name was Weiss, after all. I was convinced by my years of apathy in action. In action. Why had I neglected this part of my yard? I had taken such great pains to keep my flower beds weeded and shrubbery trimmed, and yet I had let this large, invisible component of my home go completely unattended for the eight years I had lived there. Humbly, I knocked on Ed's door and asked to borrow his pressure washer. He agreed, and now my fence looks as good as new, too. In three days, I pressure washed my fence, the soffit, a couple of palm trees, the concrete around the pool slide, the old pool box, and some of the brick on the north side of the house. I'm in love with pressure washing now. I think it's, I'm a pressure washing addict, and I wonder if I should begin to seek treatment. In all seriousness, seriousness, I'm learning some important life lessons. Some of our most disgusting parts of ourselves we've already taken for granted. We get so accustomed to them that we don't even try to change until someone new in our lives brings attention to it. When we witness the power of change in another, it gives us hope that we too are not beyond hope. With the right tools, we can make changes that can restore our lives. Sometimes folks cover up their problems, but with pressure washing, 
We can actually remove the grime in our lives. We can clean up our lives for the better, but it might take some pressure. Today, he says, I'm joining King David in his prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Psalm 51, verse 10. It might take some positive peer pressure, and it might be a messy job, but I can clean up some of the grime in my life that's been growing there for years. So David, even though he made his mistakes more than his share, one might argue, um, he also knew that he needed to clean up his act. And it wasn't so much what he was able to do for himself. It was uh, turning and, and facing up to his, his sinfulness and turning to God, um, to turn back to God, which is what repentance is, is all about. I read about a picture of, uh, in a newspaper, uh, and the caption said, Strong Man, and it has a, it was a photo of a workman displaying what seemed to be superhuman strength. He appeared to be lifting this piano up to a second-story porch. But the explanation under the, the picture, uh, plus one discernible clue, told the unseen story. By looking closely, you could see that there was a cable attached to the piano. So the real power of it to lift it was coming from the crane above rather than from the man below. As someone once said, that scene reminds me of the way that the Lord works in and through those who trust him. Looking at our circumstances, we don't see God, and yet he's there. God revealed the tr truth to men like David, um, whose psalm of deliverance is recorded in the book of 2 Samuel. Those who observed David might have attributed much of what he did to his own effort, or even in that Psalm 51, but he knew that it was the Lord who made him strong. It was God who was providing the strength for David to do what he was able to do. And so God is in our lives. David's life shows us that. Um, David is the one saint that's remembered uh, in all of Scripture. And it was from David's line, from the line of David. Uh, we heard in the Christmas gospel that they, that they journeyed, Joseph and Mary, journeyed to Bethlehem because Joseph was of the house and family. They used to say the house and lineage uh, of David. And from that family tree, from that family line, came Jesus, God with us. And in Jesus, we have someone who is who's always there for us, always ready to answer us, always ready to, to be with us. David's line has descended his kingdom. Uh, his throne extends forever through Jesus, our Lord. I want to close this morning and, and um, this week of daily devotions with a, a cute little thing that reminds us that, that God is in our lives and is available. It's entitled Voicemail. While we have direct access to our Heavenly Father, it says, imagine if he had one of those computer answering devices. It might go something like this. As we begin to pray, we hear, thank you for calling your Heavenly Father's house, your call may be monitored for quality assurance, please select one of the following options. Press 1 for prayer requests. Press 2 for prayers of thanksgiving. Press 3 for prayers containing complaints. Press 4 for all other prayers. I'm sorry, all of our angels are busy helping other sinners right now. However, your prayers are important to us and will be answered in the order received, so please stay on the line. If you would like to leave a voicemail message for God the Father, press 1 now. Jesus Christ, press 2 now. The Holy Spirit, press 3 now. <coughs> if you'd like to hear the King David singers sing a psalm while you're holding, press 4 now. To find out if a loved one has been assigned to heaven, place his or her, or enter his or her social security number without dashes, then press the pound key. If you get a negative response, try again. For reservations, please dial 5646-316, which if you remember how phone numbers used to be, John 316. For nagging questions about dinosaurs, the real age of the earth, where Noah's Ark is, and any other questions, please wait until you arrive here. Our computers indicate that you've already prayed once today. Please hang up and try again tomorrow. This office is closed on weekends and any state or federal holiday Please pray again between 9.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m., Monday through Friday, except holidays. 
If you need emergency assistance when this office is closed, contact your local pastor. And whoever wrote this responds, Thank God we have unlimited access to all hours to our Heavenly Father. The God whose steadfast love and dedication, commitment, faithfulness to David um, never faltered, never wavered. And we enjoy that same kind of relationship with God, and especially through David's descendant, Jesus, our Savior. Well, I want to wrap up this week of devotions, and again, I'm going to take next week off, and hopefully you have some time. We'll, we'll still send out the, this uh, Taking Faith Home insert, so you'll be able to, to read the passages and follow along with some of the, uh, some of the prayers and, and, uh, and other suggestions that are part of that, and then I'll be back with you uh, on Monday, January the 4th. Well, let's close this week with the, the prayer that we've been praying this week. Lord God, just as you favored your servant Mary, grant all of us faith and trust in your power to bring salvation to all through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, hope you can join us for worship tomorrow as we continue our Christmas uh, celebration. And we also have uh, the following Sunday as well, 9 a.m. on both uh, mornings uh, for uh, the first Sunday after Christmas and the second Sunday after Christmas. Again, hope that you can, can be with us then. And I will be back with you on Monday, January the 4th. Until then, take care, be well, be healthy. Bye.